Hello, I'm Dr. Kritzer. Welcome back to Advanced Data Analysis. This is Presentation 1, Part 3. And you will re recall that we were talking about how to construct surveys or questionnaires. And this pr presentation is more about that. So remember that uh, one of the things that about a questionnaire that's important is that if we're administering it to a lot of people, obviously uh, we want to have a, a form that everyone is using. Everyone is asked the same questions. Uh, that's one good thing about a survey as opposed to perhaps to an individual interview where one could perhaps stray from a script. Uh, you know, another thing is that it's a lot easier if you standardize and make these questions closed-ended, uh, it's a lot easier to process the information, to process the data. Uh, and if we don't do a good job of designing the survey, we end up with perhaps uh, incomplete information, inaccurate data, and uh, it could turn out to be more costly in terms of not just money but time. We want to make sure that the survey provides the necessary information, considers the person and is answering the questions, and has been edited uh, well, uh, and is fairly simple to, to code and process the data. The way we word the questions, very important. Uh, you know, it can have a major impact on how the people respond to or interpret these questions. Uh, we don't want to have a whole lot of wiggle room for the way people respond. This is especially uh, easier if we use closed-ended questions. We want to avoid leading questions because we want the answers to come from them without suggestions from us. We want to use simple language. Uh, we want to avoid uh, ambiguity or vagueness in our questions. Uh, and so uh, we want to ask questions that are not loaded or emotionally charged. Uh, you know, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we understand what the question is asking. In the last question, which province is bigger, Manitoba or Alberta? Well, we don't know if we're talking about land mass or population. It's really a good idea to have others read our questions before we use them. Perhaps they will come up with uh, some good criticism or notice some ambiguity that can be avoided. We want to avoid long worded questions. We want to avoid double barreled questions with more than one question inside of one. We talked about that in the previous presentation. Uh, we want to avoid jargon or slang or have questions that have an inherent bias to them. We want to avoid questions that, that too much tax the memory of our respondents. Not, like, for example, well, how many tubes of toothpaste have you purchased in the last three months? Well, who remembers that? Uh, you know, we really want to make sure that these are questions that can be answered by people. We want to avoid embarrassing or threatening questions uh, and or questions that are overly sensitive. Now we can all we can have our questions be in several formats. We could do it by mail, we could have an online survey, we could do a group administration, we could send them out in emails with a link, we could do individual interviews with people. Uh, there's various ways uh, that we can run our questionnaire, run our survey. Uh, and one way that uh, is especially simple is through an online survey, similar to, uh, to SurveyMonkey, which I talked about in the previous uh, presentation. The kinds of questions we ask, they might be factual, asking people's age, gender, education, or experience. We could ask informative questions. What do people know about a topic? 
we, my, and we can structure it so that those questions are closed-ended as well. We can f get, do a, a survey on attitudes or opinions. And one real good way to do those are with the intensity scales that I talked about, like the Likert scale uh, in the previous presentation. And we can also do self-perception type questions, allowing people to compare their ideas or actions with others. Uh, and, and be careful how we ask those questions. How active are you in the community work? Well, let's give people specific answers to respond to, uh, not, uh, oh, I'm somewhat active or I'm often active. Well, maybe we can ask this, so, well, I participate one or two hours a week or five or 10 hours a week, or five or 10 hours a month. Make sure that your answers don't overlap. Uh, again, things to avoid, leading questions, uh, questions that invite social desirability bias, uh, uh, or, or perhaps in the same line, uh, we don't wanna ask questions uh, that uh, people think that they have to answer a certain way to be politically correct. We really want to know what people are thinking, and, and it's best to know uh, and not be kept in the dark. We want to avoid double barrel questions. We want to avoid long questions or questions with double negatives. We certainly don't want to ask any irrelevant questions. And another reason why another person or people should look at your survey before you administer it. We want to make sure that our questions are, are worded well. Avoiding big uh, jargon or uh, technical words. And we want to avoid ambiguous words like often or occasionally. Keep in mind that Organizations have rules for the administration of surveys, that informed consent is often required, that surveys need clear instructions, and organizations oftentimes want to be appraised of the results of that survey. And above all, we want to ensure confidentiality when we say that the uh, results are confidential. Well, uh, these last two presentations have been about the construction of surveys and how they're used. And I will be back with you in the next unit for our next presentation.